Welcome to the Goods from the Woods, episode number 170. We're going to be getting started here in just a second with our fantastic guest, Katrina Davis. But first, I wanted to tell you, in December, I'm going to be coming back down south. Going to be doing a little touring around. On the 18th of December, I'm going to be at Beer and Comedy Night at Sweetwater Brewing Company in Atlanta, Georgia. That show is hosted by my friend Joe Pettis, and he puts on some of the best shows in Atlanta. So do yourself a favor. Come on down to Sweetwater Brew Co. on the 18th. Doors will open at 7 o'clock. The show will begin at 8 o'clock. And then two days later, on the 20th, this is going to be huge, especially if you live in the area and you're a fan of this podcast, because me and Mr. Goodnight are having a homecoming show, a big old shindig at halftime bar and grill that's in downtown auburn alabama that's right war damn eagle everybody that show is going to start at 9 p.m and it's free so come on down and see me mr goodnight past guest of the show uh, you know him you love him mr joe motherfucking rains will be there along with two of my favorite comedians from atlanta sam severin uh, you've seen her on viceland's flop house she's amazing and uh, david purdue as well david is uh, been featured on comedy central fuse tv just a hell of a performer and a really really nice guy so come check us out in auburn then on the 22nd i'll be at epic comedy hour at the flying monkey theater that's in uh, huntsville alabama at low mill one of my favorite shows in the world it's always a good time eight o'clock is when the show starts the tickets are eight bucks and you're gonna want to go ahead and buy them because they do sell out the next night december 23rd uh, Yellowhammered, the big annual shindig with uh, me, Wes Van Horn, Joe Rains. We're going to be bringing you amazing food prepared by our friend Nick Packus. And uh, the dinner will start at 7 p.m. The show will start at 8 p.m. That's at the Workplay Theater in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, one of our headliners, Whitmer Thomas, past guest of this show, and a whole lot more. So uh, you can find all the details about Yellowhammered. It's on our Twitter, which is at Yellowhammered, Y-E-L-L-A-H-A-M-M-E-R-E-D. And we'll, of course, retweet all that stuff on our Twitter, at The Goods Pod. So, without further ado, here comes episode number 170 with Katrina Davis, and it starts right now. Well, I think start kicking ass, just like it said at the beginning of the program. Man of the hour, tower of hell, too sweet to sour. Sending your ass on the jabroni jet to the other side of the territory, brother. The Alabama Hammer. The best part of my day. The goods from the woods. Hot damn! Welcome to the goods from the woods. My name is Rivers Langley. I'm Pat Riley. Mr. Goodnight, man of the hour, tower of power, too sweet to be sour, and eyes that just are so beautiful they sparkle for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and you got it to rhyme up and everything. Uh, and joining us today, uh, our friend, and uh, truly like one of the most joyful people I've ever met. <laughs> Every time I see you, you've got a thousand watt smile, and you're so funny and so fun to be around. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend. Oh, hi, I'm Katrina Davis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining Thanks, us. Rivers, that's so nice. Yeah, I, so you you uh, told that you're originally from Florida, uh, yes. as is Pat. Yeah. And uh, we've, we've had a recent uh, a recent stream of Florida guests, but uh, oh. but I think you're the you're the first from uh, from Jacksonville. We've had yeah. we've had a bunch of Miami people on. Oh, okay, yeah, that's totally different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, preachers from Orlando. Yeah, and, yeah okay. Yeah. yeah, preacher was here. Uh, Dave Williamson from Miami. Yeah, yeah. yeah so well, that does that does those places don't count. Isn't Orlando's a lot more Florida than Miami though. Miami's like yeah. a nice city uh, of its own uh, life. <laughs> right, right. Well, and it's so far away. It's kind of it's oh just its yeah. Own. yeah from for sure from I the think, kind of Florida. I lived right, right. <laughs> it's totally different. And I grew up in like I, love I grew up in East Central Alabama. I think it takes the same amount of time to drive to like Key West uh -huh. than it would to do, go to like Chicago or Milwaukee. Oh my god! <laughs> like, yeah, because really like, far down there, right? Because then a lot of my friends from Pensacola have a bunch of family in Alabama. Like they'll go back and forth to Alabama, no problem. Mm. Like yeah, yeah. Well, Pensacola is right on that line. And by the way, yesterday, um, like most comedians, I don't have cable. I just watch all my stuff on the uh, on Me the internet too. there. So. <laughs> When I actually get in front of cable, it's always shocking to see commercials again. I'm like, ooh, what's... I'm not irritated by commercials now that I don't have a TV. Right, they're like, kind of fun in front to of watch. My, yeah, I'm like, ooh, what have what? you guys been getting irritated see, by? See, I watch... Goodnight and I watch the, the broadcast antenna, and, which and, is Yeah, the TV commercials adventure. are longer than ever these days. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, they got to fit them in somehow. And they are all for prescription medicine. Yeah. Well, that's Fair. who's watching the, TV. Oh, my goodness. The prescription medicine ones are very lengthy. Yeah. <laughs> 
I know oh, the yeah. side effects alone even take on about Hulu. 45 seconds. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I brought it up because I saw a commercial I was watching uh, yesterday, the uh, Auburn Alabama game War Goddamn Eagle, and uh, I, they showed a commercial for a new show that's coming on from the people who brought you Jersey Shore. Florabama Shore. Florabama Shore, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's going to be all about, the. I, I would assume... The Redneck Riviera. Yeah, Gulf yeah. Shores, Pensacola, uh, Destin, Destin, Panama City. That yeah. is so upsetting. <laughs> so, oh boy. I'm we're... dreading that coming out. What's, what what it's station is that on? on? It's yeah, MTV. Like, MTV, yeah. uh, Oh, it's literally like, oh, it's the exact Jersey right. Shore production, Man. the same team. Yeah, it's just like, we're doing uh, it down there now. dig up for that? And but oh. now I see, but also like kids now, like kids that age now, I don't even know. Yeah, they're so self-aware. What those people are going to be like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it is almost the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that like once you're aware that you're on a reality show, your behavior changes. So they it's impossible do it and it's just study. super boring. Or everyone's constantly getting kicked out because everyone is like zero tolerance. I ain't here on. to make friends. Yeah. I ain't fucking here to make friends. Yeah. Like yeah. everyone's a monster. <laughs> I had my ass kicked out of Club La Vela like nine times. <laughs> Club La Vela. Yeah. Oh. Um. <laughs> By the way, I had uh, I I I, uh, <laughs> I work I work as a tour guide here, and I had a group the other day that I think I'm going to be fucking rich. Like if I find a way to get these people on TV, uh, they were essentially Russian oligarchs. Uh, <laughs> And were they a family? Yeah, it was a it was well, a family. Was just the Romanovs on the bus, and <laughs> you get some reward, and that's why you're gonna I be mean, rich. Kinda like, well, no, I just think if I could sell them to MTV. <laughs> oh, sell if you their could family. package yeah. these people. Yeah, like if you could just turn it into a TV show, like the, because the the two parents are were Russian and very Russian, and the wife was, uh, you know, everything was fake, like top to bottom, you know. And then their kids were from America, so they had very flat American accents. So it was like the Russia's in the news every day. Put a couple yeah. of Russian monsters hey. on TV, like <laughs> I, print money. And the 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 youngest, uh, or I'm sorry, the oldest boy looked exactly like Trump. I'll have to show you a picture. Like I, he had the exact <laughs> hair and he was saying things like, I just hate everybody. I hate everybody. Like that was his <laughs> what, catchphrase. How old was he? His nine? catchphrase is I hate everybody. He was like nine. Could he oh. be a lost son of Trump when sometime Trump go over to Russia? <laughs> Honestly, I sent the picture oh of my goodness. mom because I kind of like snuck a picture of him because like th these you people are have, unbelievable. You like, kept a water bottle from one of them and had it tested. Oh yeah. Well, I <laughs> sent I sent a picture to my mom and she was like, oh my God, that is the Trump. <gasps> like, that oh looks, my goodness. Uh, That's kind of... <laughs> but the best part uh, uh, was the, at one point we we're driving past on, on Sunset, they have a uh, place right next to uh, Nerdist where they fix like Lamborghinis and stuff and it's called like Platinum Auto Sports and you know when you're with tours usually with their you know kids like cool cars so I uh -huh. was pointed out I'm like hey guys check it out it's a Lamborghini and I did that and uh, the wife just goes yes we used to have Lamborghini <laughs> and I was like oh wow you guys had a Lamborghini that's cool and she goes no it was like the grave what does she was that like, even it was mean? like the grave and I was like what and she was like you have to lay down inside of it. It's so low to the ground. Oh. Oh. He was, she goes, it was like riding around in a coffin. That, <laughs> that don't I sound like, good. I, I know. It doesn't, but also it sounded so much more ominous. Hey, at work first, for the monsters. Like, oh. Right. Well, yeah, that, she led with it was like it was, the grave. It was just legitimate feedback on the ride yeah. in a Lamborghini. Also, yes, the monsters. That, that's yeah. exactly right. You don't yeah. got to be rich to have Lamborghinis, though, because I had really? two of them as a kid. <laughs> the Hot Wheels? <laughs> No, well, they were transformers, but oh, still. Okay. <laughs> when I was a kid, I definitely had a couple of Lamborghini folders. The ones that would oh, have yeah. like the, have the lightning bolts, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, stuff. yeah, and like a mesa, and it would just be <laughs> oh like, oh my gosh, yes, <laughs> yeah. I would have like the animal collages with different parts of the world, like whales in space, or like some like all of my like <laughs> folders were whales always... are very big uh, in that they, kind of art. Yeah, like, dolph, lots of dolphins, like yeah. Lisa Frank, or but something? then but not no, not Lisa, like more realistic than that. So oh. like dolphins, but then there's like Jupiter is behind oh, it. Like, yeah. like, like building that. mural artwork. Yeah. Oh, no, like there's the, a, it's like the, the airbrush stuff that that guy at the at the uh, Santa Monica Pier does where he'll oh he'll paint the Santa Monica Pier and then just have Saturn in the background and I'm like, what? <laughs> there's, there's a... Wow. There's a uh, this is the Santa Monica Pier on Io. And he's like, 
like, yeah, man, think yeah. about it. There's a there's a um, there's a seal music video from 1991 <laughs> that like basically is all that. Oh yeah, yeah, like like all the the like there's like a dolphin floating through space and stuff like that, and it's like really cheesy. Like you know, back then it was probably dolphins were huge, man. Well, no, it was probably like super advanced back then. Now it's like it looks oh, silly. Like the visuals three three D animation, three D computer. Like a loaf of bread <laughs> this is what goes through your yeah. mind when you listen to Enya. And yeah, and this is like when Seal had like the short dreads. Oh, so it's like so when it's Seal had hair. Seal, yeah. yeah. Now we're talking. And he's playing this like futuristic bass it's it's badass a future <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah. oh, that's man. what i always think of he went into space to save the dolphins yeah he it's, shoots fire out of his hands it's amazing awesome. yeah oh, wow <laughs> man seal was doing some princess stuff back then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did but, prince have a dolphin face i feel like, you know yeah. that song dolphin if i came back as a dolphin. oh yeah yeah that's yeah. what i'm thinking of okay i was like uh, i knew prince did something with dolphins. rose he, dolphins they all have everybody dolphins. Had he dolphin has stuff. a very obscure song called pussy control oh yeah, yeah. i friend. love that song <laughs> do you know what i'm talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah oh my gosh my friend it's like my friend's go-to lady jam <laughs> oh when really? she's like actually like, sometimes i'm really down and i just listen to prince's pussy control <laughs> yeah. it's so it's a uh, very funny pussy got a master's degree <laughs> 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 Um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, uh, Joe Raines, uh, our friend comedian Joe Raines, came on here and told the story about uh, uh, doing stand up uh, in a uh, in ambush stand up. By the way, no one in the place knew that stand up was about to happen at a strip club in Paducah, Kentucky. <laughs> oh my and goodness. as soon as they were done, they were like, "All right, that was the stand up," and everybody's like, "Boo!" <laughs> and then they started playing Pussy Control. That was no, 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 no. <laughs> That's when, when Prince when Prince died, Dave Dave Ross had the most amazing tweet where he's like, "I can't believe I'm mourning to a song called Pussy Control," <laughs> or "I can't believe I'm mourning by listening to a song called Pussy Control." <laughs> uh, oh man, I remember when they did a spoof of him changing his name to that symbol on Nickelodeon's Roundhouse. Oh, when wow. I was little. <laughs> and I was very excited. That show about it. was what makes was the, no sense. What was the, what was the, the sketch? Or like it was like uh, them announcing that he was coming to their school, uh, but they couldn't say his name. Oh, okay. So they just had like a cardboard, sim, like a squiggle, but they would hold that up and then the live band would play like a meh whenever they oh. said his name. So it was like, <laughs> you guys, you know, meh. It's coming, and it was like, man, I'm so excited! Like they just did more roundhouse. And more of that. Holy Christ, that show Wait, was, was. He wasn't actually on the show, though. No, right? no. no roundhouse couldn't get Prince. I don't know. I'm joking. All, yeah. that, all that got some pretty good gets, you know. That's, no, but oh, that's, you're right. They, had TL, yeah. they used all their budget getting TLC on. Yeah, they had, like, they had Coolio Coolio Hill. They didn't have anything left for roundhouse. <laughs> I mean, all like, that got all the good. Ads. All that got all the, the, the yeah, money yeah. that was allocated yeah. for roundhouse. <laughs> True Hill. <laughs> They're yeah. like that was our Prince money. Yeah, for for roundhouse, they they that was our Prince money. <laughs> no, I mean with Brownhouse, they probably blew all their production budget on that like cool, like motorized uh, recliner that the dad rolled around oh in. Yeah. Is that the Steiner recliner? <laughs> no, it was like this like lazy boy recliner, and it had like was, wheels on it, yeah, and it would just like zoom around. And it stuff did like look that. like it could pick up some speed. Yeah, yeah. That's and I think awesome. it went. It was like a bumper car, so it could go like it could spin and and. And then like the background behind them for all their skids and stuff was just like that warehouse style, like it was like a junkyard. Right. Kind well, of the, the, the the idea of the show is that children had taken over a train depot right <laughs> like that's what a, that, yeah. that's what a roundhouse is it's where they like park all the the trains they would do stuff. a thing i remember they would do a lot of stuff where it was like they they would do like parodies of commercials or stuff like that and they would have like essentially like a a cardboard or a plywood yeah tv right it was yeah. just like the front of a tv and not like a mr tv tv but like it kind of like it where it was just kind of looked like it was written up with uh magic marker yeah. yeah and the one i remember is like they did a take off on meatloaf called vegetarian loaf oh uh, yeah yeah and it was like that. i will do anything for love but i won't eat meat and it was like <laughs> high level comedy on 90s how good would it be to be the adult writer of roundhouse <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're Just, the bar you have to clear that's is yeah. so low. Well, all like that a sixteen-year-old to <laughs> not even yeah. it's that. I mean, like, shit. I, I watched nine-year-old. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say that's when I was watching. Oh yeah, I was way younger than that, but I was like the only kid watching it. Yeah. Like I had no one to talk to about. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I think they were like marketing to sixteen, but sh yeah. shooting for like yeah. nine to ten. Yeah. yeah, that's what marketing is. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, they know the younger kids are really into what the older kids. Yeah. Are. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's a smart move. One tier up. Well, all those like 
Nickelodeon comedy shows were always like their sitcoms, like Welcome Freshman or yeah, um, Save by the Bell Ripoff. Yeah, yeah, or, or uh, where Salute it was like Salute Your Shorts. Salute Your Shorts was, uh, was actually good. That was a great With one. Ugh. <laughs> but, but, like, freaking Zeke. Yeah, Zeke the Plumber. Oh, oh that God. was terrifying. What? That was so he was just, scary. He was like, what? Like, uh, basically like a combination of like Ernest Worrell and Leatherface. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my goodness. That's a very, that's a perfect description. Like he had like of, Ernest like outfit, but yeah, then he but had then like no, a. Like weird baggy uh, face. Or I guess it was more yeah. like Michael Myers it or was something. Like, like he had a mask. It was like the bag that's like that burlap sack that Cillian Murphy puts on his face and freaking Oh, so it was like Friday the 13th part two. Yeah. Before Jason got the hockey oh mask, gosh. he just had the bag. Terrifying. So was, it was a burlap sack, in other words. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. So scary. The one dishwashing gloves. And you would punch too, your right? face. Yeah. I went to UF for college. Oh, okay, right and on. And like freshman year, the first day of school, it was just nothing but kids wearing their t-shirts from when they were on Legends of the Hidden Temple. Wait, at the University of Florida? Yeah, because there's so many people that yeah. were from Orlando from other places yeah. where they'd gone and auditioned for that show and been on it. And they every one of them thought they were going to be the kid with a Legends of the Hidden, Hidden Temple, Temple shirt. Wow. And they were just like green monkeys and silver snakes everywhere. Yeah, like yeah. every kid has done that show. <laughs> and so there were so many of them. I went shirt. to high school with a, with, with a girl that w- won Legends of the Hidden Temple. Nice. Like yeah, she was like she wore her um, green monkey shirt. See? Yeah, she wear it to the prom. Uh, she should have. No, it was like one of those things where I was homesick and I was just like the next day I, I what came home from school because I was watching a Nickelodeon game in sports and they had an episode of Legends of the Hidden Temple on, and it was like yo, this kid looks familiar. Is that Lauren? Like oh, that's La-. and I asked her at school and she's like, holy crap, um, nobody. Wow, <laughs> you know, like she was surprised, and then the You're first the day, only person who ever recognized her. Yeah, and it was like the next time we didn't have to wear uniforms at school, she wore her green monkey shirt, and I was just like, <laughs> "Bro, <laughs> I will give you money for that." She's like, yeah. "Never, <laughs> no. never bury me in this shirt." Yeah, I was always a green monkeys guy. They're, they're yeah. the best. Yeah, because I like the blue barracudas. I like the purple parrots. Oh, uh. yeah. <laughs> if somebody wanted to be smart, they would just walk around in like the the safari outfit and and oh the one that the, yeah, the host the dog wore oh my goodness as a gr- now that i'm an adult i feel like he probably did not like that oh yeah, yeah. oh no <laughs> and just well, corral you know, all the people you, you know what i bet he lived in a great house down there right. and he probably lived an so outstanding funny. life and just, he just just going to commentate <laughs> these kids not knowing which part of a body's on the bottom of a monkey <laughs> <laughs> get it together people. yeah yeah just having just not scream at them like <laughs> yeah. this is like, not oh hard. no that one's upside down and try- oh my goodness yeah yeah i well, used to yell at that game like football when i was a child <laughs> oh yeah well they get to the the stair the trivia stairs yeah where they had to oh go up goodness. and first- between that and guts just being like come on right you've right. never seen a rope wall before like yeah screaming. well no the trivia stairs were the one where they had to like go up and answer a question to move oh, on I and it was that. always like weird socrates was born in oh which Goodness. Right, <laughs> his mouth moving. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, Greece, well, old Mac would Rome or Mexico, yeah. and somebody would just like Mexico, and it's like I just told you the story, shithead. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. well, it was just like always weird that no that <laughs> certain <laughs> certain items would end up in the hidden temple where it's just like Abraham Lincoln's hat is here in the legend. You're like, wait, wh- why? why? Why is that there? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Well, the one thing that That's... weirded me out about that show was that. There has to be a non-trivial amount of like girls that had majorly crushes on Kirk Fogg. There was probably Katrina. He was too old. <laughs> <laughs> he was a grown man. Yeah, no, that's he true. was like at best a fun uncle. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like the other thing is, is that um, those like the temple guards. That's kind of creepy when you really think oh, about it. Oh, they were. Well, no, I was like, very afraid. But of them. it's like some dude in like a loincloth. Grabbing on mask. kids. Yeah, just like, ah, That's I, like was, I was waiting for someone to like 
Bobby he'll let go of my purse one of those guys just oh, not being ready because yeah. they jump out at you I don't know you <laughs> just like being afraid and just like panic punching somebody ready to play a little kickball <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's just like some scantily clad dude that has to like just like grab kids. It's kind of yeah, that guy Kirk was Kirk Fogg. Old. All right, yeah, but he looks like a low rent Kirk Cameron. Yeah, he does. <laughs> we'll, we'll put this on our he Twitter. Would've, he would have been a good stand-in for the guy from Blue's Clues, almost. Oh, Steve, like a little, yeah, his, a little bit. A, <laughs> I prefer you doye in that role. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I always felt like Mark Summers had a little bit more zest to him. Maybe that's why. Oh, Mark Summers I'm is lukewarm about it because uh, everybody remembers Double Dare, but then he had the second show. What, what would, would you, you do, do? that yes. show? Oh, well, let's not forget his Renaissance nowadays too with the Food Network. Oh yeah, yeah, Unwrapped. Well, Unwrapped. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's on the Food Network now, but I just he's a uh, Silver Fox still. I know. What would you? But do? like knowing what uh, I know, knowing what I know now about him which is that he had a uh, crippling obsessive compulsive disorder and he's like a germaphobe oh uh, watching, i didn't know that go watch an episode of what would you do and just know that you're watching a man who's on fire on the inside yeah. whenever he gets yeah. like a little bit of whipped cream on him or yeah. like oh you, my you know, goodness they're, you know, and they're like rifling through a fake mouth isn't that that show or is uh, that yeah, the other yeah, one the, oh, the double fake dare nose. was all that's double, that stuff double dare? too that's, that's, that's what i mean this like, had to be the worst job humanly possible well for if this you remember guy. double dare he was always on a stage elevated with the podiums up there and then you'd go your challenge begins now and everybody right. would run down yeah. so he was never actually in the line of fire for all the mess right what no, would he would do? be he would be during like the obstacle course right know. so it would be like yeah. if, if there was like the, the physical challenges like because oh, he did follow robin him. that's right robin would have to handle the mess right <laughs> but but robin. um the but long-suffering robin if so, if they won and it ended with like the sunday yeah. slide or the blue plate sp- special and somebody goes for a hug and it's super sloppy family double dare. Some kid, somebody's covered in like oh, fake butter and shit. Yeah, of course, yeah. like oh, yeah. Like and they, they're hugging. Yeah. They're hugging Mark Summers, and he looks like you know he looks like he would rather be anywhere. Yeah, else. Yeah. He's just like <laughs> shaking uh, on the inside. I like get that, yeah. Because yeah. even as a kid, like being in Florida, because people were always thinking like, oh, I'm gonna go down to Orlando and like try yeah. to get on something. And I was like, the the thought of getting slimed has never seemed appealing to me. Like oh, I've yeah. never wanted that on me. It's yeah. messy. It's like somebody it's, pour a cold looks, oatmeal all over me. It looks so upsetting. Like, I wouldn't mind ugh. it. It's going to get in your ears. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you got to wash it out your hair and everything. See? Yeah. But good night it, gets it. It, it. You know, whatever. It, 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 it's edible, probably. Uh, probably, yeah, yeah. yeah well, but does it taste good? Well, it can no, only it be probably does so toxic. It probably doesn't taste good, but if you get sick, then you can sue Nickelodeon, so you get money. You know what the most horrifying show on Nickelodeon was? I just saw his Wienerville. Oh yeah, with Mark what Wiener. That? that show, that show was it hideous. Sounds horrifying. Oh man! If you don't remember, uh, it was a show hosted by a guy named Mark Wiener, and it was called Wienerville. That, and he Mark was Mark Wiener sounds familiar. And it was just yeah, a, and he it had, was a guy who would stick his head through the curtain, and then he had little a little puppet body underneath his full sized head, and it was really disturbing. And they used to run this commercial, and they ran this commercial way way past whoop there it is era into like the late 90s where it was like tag team the 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 group tag team just with their heads stuck through the curtain and they had little puppet bodies and they were just like hey we're tag team watch wienerville and yeah like, I was and there like, was like, did you film your last episode in 1991? Because it seems like you filmed your last episode in 1991. but it was like horrifying because there'd be like one where he was like uh the the mayor and it was like uh, this, is like a female mayor. But so he's all like made up, and it had these little hands, and he had this annoying voice. I feel like and I there was one where he was like a baby, mayor. which was like, did he have a blonde bob as a lady mayor? Yes. Yeah. And then it was I like, this, like burned into my brain somehow. Yeah, Wienerville was like really horrifying. The baby one was out of control. Yeah. I definitely oh, I've seen remember this. this show. Oh my goodness. We'll put this up on our Twitter. Yeah, We're at the good spot. This is uh weird. I don't know if this is horrible. Yeah, the baby. Oh god. It's I definitely so, remember. This looks like Mexican TV. And what- <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> See you. Oh, I remember. For yeah, it's so days. it'll it- be a blast. <laughs> Okay, my little space muffin. As soon as I gave Wilson his coordinates, so I'll be landing smack I mean, it's, dab it's, right in the middle of Puppet City. In a and this flash. show would be on, Over like, this is not a thing where, like, Wienerville was, like, a 30-minute show. <laughs> no, Wienerville would be on for, like, 
<laughs> two hours on a Saturday I, afternoon. I, 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 just Wienerville chunks. Wienerville. Yeah, because I, I it just would... now have like very distinct memories of turning on the TV and being like, "Oh God, it's Wienerville <laughs> shit." <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I hated Wienerville, Wienerville yeah. again. I know. Yeah. Mom, Mom, trapped in Wienerville uh, all Saturday afternoon. I'm, I'm turning where's, on. The, where's my Ninja Turtles tape? Yeah. Wienerville's on. <laughs> I'm turning on Nickelodeon, hoping for a My Brother and Me fucking marathon. Yeah. <laughs> and, <I'm gonna> get, <laughs> and it's just fucking Wienerville. It's just yeah. Wienerville. I was just talking to my mom the other day about how I used to love um, the Adventures of Pete and Pete. Oh hell yeah! And she was like, I never understood that show. Oh. Like she was just like, <laughs> of all the shows that you loved watching, never got why you like that one so right. much and I was like so good well that show almost goes back to what I, I was talking about a minute ago with when you're on the writing staff for a children's show is like you have such a low bar to clear but also you have the ability to go crazy yeah. weird with it because kids like funny voices catchphrases and bright colors and as long as you can hit like a few of those things and some really simple jokes as you've seen by like shows like Adventure Time and like Gravity Falls, like there's all these oh, cartoons that are that are out now that are extremely sort of subversive. I mean, all even, those you, damn nerd cartoons. Like, like, well, all even, Rick and Morty. I mean, even, yeah. well, no, 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 no. That's an adult. I'm talking. I don't even know kids any. shows. It's kind of a yeah, thing like that nerds that actually- watch, and they're all like, "Do y'all watch this? Do y'all watch this?" I'm like, no, and then they still <laughs> talk to you about it anyway. Well, and, <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I mean there's that was very there's spot on. Mr. There's <laughs> there's it's true. You're exactly right. Yeah. But that's that's what I mean with like there's there's kids shows that uh you know they they can hit all the necessary sort of uh you know benchmarks for children and then they can go super weird and actually appeal to stoners and that's sort of what we're yeah because the Pete adventures of Pete that. Pete I feel like they but I feel like they didn't always do I don't know I feel like like do you remember that movie Angus Yeah of yeah. course yeah I feel like it was like a TV show for the same thread of people where it's just like sometimes stuff just is happening yeah, where yeah. like other kids can watch and be like why is this a show and I would be like this is great yeah, like, yeah. Um, I always think of the Nightcrawler one where they tried to stay up all night yes. oh, yeah. and the girl kept sneezing to stay awake <laughs> and she like couldn't find the sun fast enough and just like passed out in someone's spray yard over. and then yeah. there was like the kid that, the kid that kind of looked like Jesse Case that grew a beard and he's like 12 oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like 10 he's growing a beard <laughs> And he's just eating like crab flakes to stay awake or something like that. <laughs> it's a good show, man. And then the dad's fingers get too fat for the bowling ball. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and he's running his fingers on a little treadmill. Oh, I forgot. And there, I remember when the little Pete used to watch the lady feed her birds from across the thing and he would watch her arm and it was like, it's hypnotic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I the, just know that, uh, that Danny Tamborelli is now in a jam band in Nashville. Oh, no. I thought way. you were, I thought you were going to say that he's performing at Flappers this week. That was, that was <laughs> no, no, usually the way in which this, the, the always, sentence ends. I always had a crush on the eldest Pete, but I think he's still an actor or something. Didn't they become handsome later on? <laughs> have you heard them live uh no i just had a friend who lives in nashville who like ran into him at a bar and was like i'm sorry are you little pete right now and he was, he was like, like not right now but i used day. to be yeah yeah and he uh yeah this is this is jounce the song is called who hates the office maybe he doesn't like steve carell so this isn't too jammy actually oh there he is Okay. He <laughs> looks exactly the same. Yep. Like he's wearing the shirt from the set of PP. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds a bit like the song from Pete and Pete, this actually. It sounds a bit like everything from 1992. Yeah, yeah. totally. I just want to hear him sing. Where are you at, Danny? Oh, is he the singer also? Oh, he's the singer, I think. Yes. Ugh. <laughs> the guy on bass. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> we'll put this on Twitter. Are you just judging me? Okay, actually, this just sounds like the Jayhawks. Actually, or it sounds like Kings of, <laughs> or it sounds like Kings of Leon. Actually, is this the Jayhawks? It really sounds like the fucking Jayhawks from like. It's like the Jayhawks without the stolen Tom Petty riff. Yeah, I haven't heard his voice since it changed after puberty, so this is a lot for me. Well, he he was on that uh, that show with uh, with Suzanne Summers, the Figure It Out. That's Summer Sanders or whatever. <laughs> There's a difference between Suzanne Summers. <laughs> yeah, get it right, <laughs> Summer the Sanders lady from the Thigh Master. You know, yeah, yeah. Done. She got a gold medal in swimming for the into, thigh master. They're both into yeah. fitness, you know. <laughs> a gold medal. Yeah, but one of them was on Three's Company. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> no, uh, yeah, no, he was on that. He was on that show. Figure it out. And the only one that I like knew immediately is one time they had this kid on who was like the baby on the cover of Nevermind. Oh, and they were like trying to figure out what he was. But I already, was I already, he the real baby? Yeah, he was the actual baby on the cover I of forgot Nevermind. Forgot about that show. Yeah, and I and I was Sometimes. twelve and a nerd, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a uh, Spencer, whatever his name is, from the cover of Nevermind. It's like I just knew already. Lori Beth Denberg's just like, are you a actor? <laughs> Do you have a special talent? <laughs> Laurie Beth Denberg. She's the worst. Katrina was going to tell us about synesthesia, which is something <laughs> I am, I'm only vaguely familiar with, but I'm, I'm very excited to hear about. Yeah. And so, well, because I was thinking about it, because um, I did a joke that I have about at a show, and a kid came up to me afterwards and was like, I like you because you like, you're weird like me. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I'm like friends with this kid now. <laughs> but, like, but I was talking about um, how numbers have personalities to me okay and so synesthesia is normally um associating personalities or colors with letters and numbers okay so if certain letters always look a certain color to you or you have a certain feeling about the letter b or whatever that is yeah like there's a bunch of different forms of it like i was looking up um all of these different music artists and people that have different versions of it. Cause some people have sound, the ones that, uh, work for sound and like seeing certain things or lights. Oh, it's like people who like sound. taste, taste colors and like that kind, kind of stuff. Of, yeah. Cause like Tori Amos has a version of it. I think Kanye West has. A oh, version I, I'm of it too. confused. Is this, is this a thing that people can taste or is this <laughs> something that people is into? No, it's, I, it's something your interest. brain does. Okay, because you know who else it's has like the it? the way you interpret things. What? Uh, John Madden. Who hey, ace is the place? Yeah. That guy. What does he have it? He has like the how? number thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because in one of his books, I think it's well, one size it doesn't, doesn't fit, fit at all. all. Yeah. It's, he mentions he's obsessed with numbers. And he and he associates numbers with celebrities. And he gives them team numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like uh, uh, Pope John Paul and people yeah, like yeah. that. But oh. like Pope John Paul wasn't like two. Uh-huh. He was like... Uh, uh, like 50 something right it was just uh, like this like, so it's not that he associates numbers with certain celebrities celebrities make him think of certain numbers, numbers yeah like he'll be like yeah you like winnie houston is totally a 105 <laughs> or no but it would be like numbers that they would wear on, on a, a jersey. sports team because every yeah. player you know it's like they have their number yeah. every person so has their houston, number like they're I think a player whitney houston was in there and she was like 14 or something oh like so that. she yeah. so when he was like watching the game he'd be like oh okay Deion sanders is whitney houston or something like no that. No, I mean, no he's like she strikes me as a five Oh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Rivers, he strikes me say. as a 73. Right. Rivers, oh, 24. Okay. Pat, right. 13. Oh, see, I, thought you were, I thought you were saying that's how he me- memorized like, jersey numbers. Like, no, 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 no. He has like Everybody's a number like to him. He feels about, right? Yeah. They, oh, oh, okay. I was thinking like, oh, Bo Jackson's 34, and so is John Candy or something. <laughs> <laughs> so is J- oh, John Candy. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to think of like who was killing it in 89 when Bo was. I was like, good John Candy. <laughs> yeah, no. They, yeah, because he has that sort of thing where he talks about it length in there where he's like the two things about is that he's afraid of flying so he takes that bus everywhere Uh, and he's like obsessed with the bus and he likes mexican food that's mexican food yeah yeah but there's this thing where he says like you were talking about where he like he associates people this person is a number right Right. so what what was the what was the the joke or or all like the numbers one through ten have personalities Uh uh-huh like so whenever i see them in certain arrangement it makes me feel a certain way about numbers. Oh wow! What's six like? So like, <laughs> like one through three are like little kids that are all friends and they're always just like getting into trouble together. Okay, they're and, they're like the Goonies. Yeah, yeah. and four <laughs> is three's older sister. She's Angel- fi- Angelica. <laughs> no, she's like super nice. <laughs> and five and six are their parents, but they're really really mean. Okay. Um, <laughs> and like that, like in so the. Sl- 
like in the like joke Cinderella. it's like when I was little <laughs> and I saw Matilda for the first time oh yeah like Rhea Perlman and Danny DeVito and Matilda I was like that's five and six like they wrote five and six into a movie like I was freaked out yeah by them as characters because they were so much those numbers to me oh like, yeah yeah and then like seven is like an older like bully but he's kind of harmless like he's kind of got a heart of gold like seven's like Roger Klotz oh okay and then um, <laughs> it's like Steve from Stranger Things yeah, yeah. and like eight <laughs> is this like chubby but lovable guy that's in love with four and five and six don't think that he's good enough so they're always trying to keep them apart it's like a russian novel <laughs> yeah. like, this ten. is how i feel about like all numbers so like so like <laughs> the number like 546 makes me feel bad because i'm like oh four's freaking stuck in between them like uh <laughs> like or if like four like 478 is like sevens in between four and eight and they just want to be together and yeah. it's like annoying yeah it's like a whole thing Seven's like it's uh, wait. It's seven is the is the the chunky he, guy. No, eight's the chubby, eight's the chubby lovable chunky guy. guy. Seven's the bully. So he's like in the middle of them, like ruining. But things. eight's always like getting kicked out of the house, like DJ Jazzy Jeff. Oh, he's so sweet. <laughs> I like that's why I like the number forty eight. They like finally get to be together. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> so what's happening with nine? Oh, nine and ten are like this hot jock couple, <laughs> and, <laughs> and ten always picks on eight, and like nine. Will like defend him and he doesn't know why but nine's really in love with eight but she'll never have him wow <laughs> this is so she's like randomly nice to him and yeah. he like doesn't really know why yeah <laughs> wow I is love zero it. included in <laughs> no no just, just it's <laughs> never been like because i even like i did a test about it and stuff and doing like the numbers and colors and things yeah and it's like certain numbers and colors make more sense to me but i don't have like strong opinions about them where did you do a, a test of, it was like it? a random thing online but it'll oh, okay. ask questions where it's like yes no or i don't care and it's like oh does the number zero seem like whiter or whiter gray to you and i'm like oh it seems clear all the time like if yeah. you have if you even have a way of you that you think about that number in your head or you you just don't think about it any kind of particular way. Wow. Yeah. And that's because uh, I've heard of uh, of people like, you know, hear, hearing colors or tasting yeah. colors and stuff like that. I, I've never heard of somebody like ascribing personality to numbers. And I like that. That's so... <laughs> I guess I I guess I kind of did. Well, I think I used it might be a was, different thing though. Well, I used to just think I was autistic, and then someone <laughs> came up to me after a show and was like, "No, that's like a real thing." And then I like researched it and looked into it. But now, whenever I do that joke, someone will come up to me and be like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you did that!" Like, right, and right. have some random version of it. Like even um, uh, Christina Martinez, um, uh -huh. she's another comic. Uh, but I'm forgetting the middle part of her name. She's so great, but she has a tattoo on her wrist of. Uh, her like favorite author had it with letters and colors. Uh -huh. And so she has a tattoo of the series of letters that look like a rainbow to him. Oh, like wow, it's like okay. every color of the spectrum, but it looks like K M L J. Like it looks like Nonsense. gibberish, but it's like, yeah. those are the letters that represented like a perfect spectrum of color to him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. it's super cool. Must have taken a long time to explain that to the tattoo artist. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing is their colors. Just, it's just like in black and white to the rest of us. But he's like, no, seriously, guys. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, this is. You better make this look good. <laughs> this makes sense to exactly this one person. That, that you better look green. Yeah. One of the things I find to be interesting is I, I find three to be the funniest number. Huh. Three as a you know a concept. I don't know. I always found you write that it down, be... turn it sideways. It looks like a butt. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> or upside down it's balls. What did you first notice the the thing with describing the That's personalities? That's what I've to always it? like thought about it when I write down numbers. Sometimes I, when I was way younger, I used to tr like think about stories of them, like. That's what I was going to ask. When I was bored. That's what I was going like, to ask. Like if I was just like looking at a list of a bunch of number, like, you know, math problems or right, whatever. Right, right. Um, it might but, make it more like kind of palatable, I guess, if, if it's like a at a young age, like looking yeah, at numbers. But like I've always felt that way. Like I don't know where. Yeah. Yeah. Could it have to do with the way numbers are introduced to a yeah, person? Yeah, like, like Sesame Street. Like yeah. usually with yeah. Sesame Street, they always have some fun little thing for I the know, numbers like, and the letters. I know, like maybe the six had angry mouth the, the day like, that I watched. Yeah. 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 Dance <laughs> around and stuff. Because I, like, I always remember like whenever I see like the letter U. 
like sometimes I think about like that uh, Smokey Robinson thing on on Sesame Street where he's singing "You Really Have a Hold on Me" and the letter U's like a little puppet and it's uh-huh. like grabbing onto him and he's singing uh-huh. it and he's like trying to kick yeah. it off of his. So you the know? letter U super clingy to you? Yeah, it would be. <laughs> the, but we, I would associate it from like you know that yeah. when I was a kid because it's like you know the the first images that you kind of retain in your memory a lot of time at least. Yo, know, for me, it was or like TV, yeah. like TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like, com- like you're wearing a Garfield shirt. Like I remember a lot of the stuff that I retained from when I was a kid was like, w- like reading Garfield comic strips <laughs> when I was like three, like looking at the pictures and stuff like that. When I was really young, there was stuff that was over my head. Now as an adult, I go back and read it and realize that it wasn't funny in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask Take you, that, Jim Davis. Dude, well, that Garfield, I mean, look, it was lovable, it was fun, but I mean, it really was just kind of commercialized hack work. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like, there's that, but then also there's people that see, like, like there was an old documentary that Kanye West was going through, like his uh, old paintings and stuff. What's Kanye's And there deal? was a like, painting. What's his number? Well, like, no, he it, was going through a painting and showing the beats. He was like, this is what this beat looks like in oh, my head. Oh, that's what it was. And yeah. it was like this very abstract, like red and purple black background thing that was super textured. And there were just these like kind of long, narrow walls in space, kind of. That's yeah. like what the painting kind of looked like. Could it have been like, that he was really, of- really high? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it could have been, but this was like before he, like, this was when he was like way, way young. Right. This yeah. This was a long time ago. Right. So it was like, really before like, the oh, Kardashians no. Yeah, no, like, brain. this was like, oh, this was a painting from like high school. Yeah. And I just did this painting. Maybe this the Kardashians didn't boil it because we've got some evidence here that he might be a little. Oh, I have yeah. a theory that yeah. the Kardashians definitely have a negative effect on black men overall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're just ruining them one by one. I'm kind of with you on yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, Chris Humphrey's basketball career was never the same again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Lamar Odom. <you> know? <laughs> yeah, but he's gotten some pretty sweet comedy spots, so. Yeah. I think one of the things that also sustains the Kardashians is like dads and moms complaining about them. Yeah, that's like, true. Like, yeah, because it's like. Too, so younger girls defend them and are like, I love them. I'm buying all the lip gloss. Oh, well, no, yeah. like my dad was just like, What's the deal with these Kardashians? I don't get it. I'm like, I like asking me for and complaining (laughs) like I'm like allied with them or something like that. Like, you know, it's like. Yeah, well, I think- I, so uh, I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I do tours. I I spend time with uh, families. Young kids are obsessed with that shit, and they all have the video game, which is where they're making the card has a video game. It's an app on your phone, and you have to buy upgrades for the characters. So you can either be Kim or Chloe or whatever. This is where they're making all. So the are they money. like real life Bratz dolls or something? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Do you have to buy an upgrade to be Chloe now as opposed to like 2005? <laughs> well, yeah, when you have the big old jaw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to you have to pay the money to get the jaw shaved down. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's this it's this game and like kids are obsessed with it. But the thing is, every time you buy like lipstick for your character, you buy shoes, whatever, you actually pay real money to iTunes to do it. Like you actually have to buy the stuff. That's where they're making all that money. So it was very funny a couple of years ago when Kanye West like announced that he was going to like have like a video game, basically. And everyone kind of made fun of him. And I'm like, yo, his wife is that's where most of her money is coming from. And no one really knows that that doesn't already play it. Right. Well, (laughs) if he he could probably save a lot of money in his life by just getting the video game instead of marrying one of them. (laughs) Well, you know, it's but now he's got the he's got the model for how it could be done, you know, at least. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's because I've I'm not around like kids very much, right? right? Yeah. It's just like I, it's one of those things where because there was a thing about her uh, Kim Kardashian's fragrance line. She had like a line of perfumes, yeah. and they like sold like a million units the first day. Which, yeah. yo, that's not necessarily a testament to anything because I remember the craze around Michael Jordan cologne, <laughs> right? So <laughs> that doesn't really say much for anything. <laughs> But it's like, yeah, like the level of just like, yeah, it sold out completely. Just it's her, right. Yeah, yeah, because it's her. And I'm just like, well, that's like, just like, it's kind of something that I don't really comprehend. And I don't have like a frame of reference as to like, I didn't realize I they were still so famous. Oh, yeah. Yes. I didn't, I didn't and now know. they're the younger ones because the younger one had like this lip kit that 
all these girls freaked yep. out and sold like it sold out immediately yeah. like could not keep it anywhere all this stuff and then she came out with like a second batch and they like proved that it was done with like way less stuff like cheaper stuff like she oh, like yeah. knocked yeah. down the whole second batch like yeah. <laughs> and was just taking advantage of all these kids the sad fact about reality shows is like the reason we have Breaking Bad and the reason we have The Wire and the reason we have all these great you know high end shows right now is because everything is built on the back of cheap 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 reality tv shows those are going to pay for all of your great shows your stranger things all that stuff the studio is making money yeah. off of stuff that costs nothing to make so people are just like that's yeah, why like, that's why floribama coast is gonna be amazing that's right yeah floribama <laughs> shore is gonna is gonna pay for is that gonna bring us the next citizen Kane? probably <laughs> well, I, i'm not so sold on this because there was a time when everything on tv bottom to top was supposed to be good you didn't just make crap to fuel three good shows. I'm talking to y'all entertainment industry <laughs> with your model out there. The funny thing about Jersey Shore was the source material for Jersey Shore was infinitely more interesting than Jersey Shore, the show. Right. So they had a true life, uh, MTV true life. I true I have life a summer rental. I have a summer yeah. show. And oh that my one, gosh, I remember that. Yeah, and that was like the, the template awesome. for what Jersey Shore was going to be. And it wasn't like the situation. It wasn't j right. well. It was like a bunch of like guys who were like bald and have various levels of size and heavy set that are just like, and there's the main one that works construction. And it's he like, just wanted to find love. Exactly. Oh it's like, God, this I is remember. the year I'm going to, you know, every year I work so hard, you know, doing construction. <laughs> and this guy. is the year that I'm going to find, maybe I'll find the one, maybe I'll find my true love in, in Wildwood. <laughs> like all he wanted was to find someone to love him for who what he truly was yeah. without wearing a shirt for an entire <laughs> yeah. weekend. He was the, the he, no sleeves, and it's just like there's like this one scene, so. and it's it's like almost the modern modern equivalent of that scene in like Blazing Saddles where all the cowboys are farting around the fire, <laughs> where it's just like they're all like they all look the same, right? They're all various sizes of like bald, like stout New Jersey, you know, Italian Americans. One of them I think is like eight feet tall and weighs like 700 pounds. <laughs> and he's just like, one of them is they're eating pizza. And there this guy's just like, I got a burp that's forming up right on the bottom of my ball sack. And when this thing comes up, it's going to be loud as fuck. And they're all sitting around burping, trying to get like, they're eating pizza and burping. And it's just like, oh this is God. captivating. Oh <laughs> and this guy's trying to find love. And he's, it's just like, the, the Jersey Shore was just that crew of folks. Like, and then like, you're right. They're that episode very, was like, so not with that show. Was. Yeah. And they're like various sisters or like cousins or female cousins. Yes, you know? And they would come. Oh my gosh. That was so great. And it would show them all getting ready. And they were showing their pictures. Like, this is us from last summer. Like yelling about like <laughs> trading bathing suit tops. And like, uh, it was so great. Cause there was a guy's house and a girl's house, but the girls were way younger and they were just like, yeah, that guy's a jerk anyway like yelling from the balcony <laughs> oh it was so good and was, we had you bepping yeah, yeah like being like oh seriously and just being like because oh, at one point like there's a girl that he wants to come back so he's like sitting at the house like it's all late and quiet and he's like oh man I don't think she's gonna come man like I guess like maybe she found something else to do like I don't know like he's so sad and just, they're like, playing like <laughs> stains it's been a while like <laughs> in the background it's, like, it's <laughs> heartbreaking yeah. and there's like a scene where he's at this like nightclub so in in like uh wildwood or where have you and he's like he sees the girl the woman that he had the crush on the night the the summer before right and she's with another guy and he's just like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> get the, get, hey, you want to step you know <laughs> just like and he like gets kicked out of the the club and he like totally ruins about it. from two people who do not know who he is. Like that girl probably was like, I don't know who that guy. Yeah, like, like he was very upset. He, and all the know. guys just like they look like kind of various obese versions of right said Fred. Like they kind of <laughs> all have that look. That no is sleeves. So like 
accurate. And they like, like yeah. And at the end, he's like, oh it's back God. at the end. He's like on a on a skid loader, the same like it almost looks like the same skid loader at the same like clear like the you know demolition job that he's clearing up. He's just like, yeah, summer was wonderful. Uh, I didn't find my true love, but you know, I just look forward to the next summer and we go get our summer share. And, and he's like, maybe, maybe next I'll, year, maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the so the Jersey Shore would have ruled if it was that. Show. If it was just that real. <laughs> but see, it was between that true life and the true life where you get to see Keenan from Keenan and Kel go on an internet date. That's what? my other favorite true What's life. That one? I've been- oh my gosh, it's so good. I think it's true life like I I was a I'm kid celebrity. I- no, oh. I don't know if it's P I don't know if it's true life I used to be on TV or true life just about internet dating because it was that long because you know what I mean? Wow. It was like that long ago where it was like but Weird, I'm pretty yeah. sure it was just like the child fame part and they like followed a couple different people. But at one point he like internet dates this girl and it's it's just very funny to see him do something so not what you would expect someone you love that much from your childhood doing. And it's just like Keenan trying to get some from the internet, man, yeah. like kicking in Atlanta. I think he lives in Atlanta or somewhere. Like, yeah. like they meet up at a club was, or something. Yeah, this was before he was on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, Wars, so it was right. way like, before. Right. It was whatever like way happened before to that. this guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was kind of one of those kind of things. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's Keenan. And then he like goes on a date with some girl. And I was like, what? He's like out here. <laughs> yeah, there's. A, I could date Keenan if I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was the two that I remember. Uh, well, there's True Life. I, uh, uh, I want to be a prof- too rife. I'm a professional wrestler. We should have a whole episode about that. Oh yeah, for sure. At some point, uh, but there was True Life. I'm in the furry fandom. The one that oh, was yeah. like that. the whole <laughs> one about a guy, and it was like the first point in which like furries became like a small niche joke on the internet to being like widely known, and it was just like it got into the whole yeah. thing of it. And then there was another one, the calf implants one is my. Ooh, that, that is one. a very good one. When calf you, implants. To yeah, so yeah. watch that guy waddle across a hotel room to a pizza. <laughs> he's got a he's walk. got a walker like an old lady from his calf <laughs> implants. He and looks he like orders a pizza in the hotel room that he like got for himself oh, to recuperate in, God. and he's just like it takes him so long to like get off the bed and walk over to get this pizza. <laughs> he looks like he looks like young Buff Bagwell, and like he's a. Uh, like when he was a handsome stranger and like his whole thing is that he works out so much but the one thing he cannot do is work out his calves like he just, he ca- just can't he get does calf big. rise he can't get them big so he gets like uh he lives with his mom uh like buff <laughs> yeah like buff. <laughs> like they're in the gym at one point and everyone's working and he's like see like look at that guy's calves over there like <sighs> Just frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> and there's like, they, so he he gets calf implants, and he does the hotel. I completely forgot about the hotel. Oh, he like so gets a, like a hotel room for like three weeks, and it's it's like like a plush hotel room. Like this isn't like a Motel Six. This is like a place where you can get like they have like real designed bedspreads and and multiple pillows and things like that. Multiple and pillows. he's just like got this walker he's like i know when i heal i'm going through a lot of pain but i know when i heal i'll have my calves and i'll be complete (laughs) and the last scene is he's like running down the beach and he's just like like, his calves are jiggling like pamela anderson no 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 he's like (laughs) it's like got this it's kind of like kind of has the effect of like rocky three when they're running down the beach but he's like yeah i got calves and he's like (laughs) Hug, like grabbing his calves and like jutting his butt out, like, hu- like I guess that's the closest thing you can do like, to hugging your calves. I was about to say, like, as close as they could get to him, like running with his calves into the sunset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a fine guy, baby, that's a fact. But maybe everything that dies someday he comes back. Put your makeup on, fish your hair up pretty, and meet me tonight. I put on my goldfish socks today. Oh, that's oh um, nice. Very nice. <laughs> because I had a goldfish for 10 years. <laughs> Just one goldfish yeah. lived for 10 years? Yeah, I won a goldfish at the state fair at a dance competition. Like, we did a dance competition when I was in high school. Well, I need to hear everything. 
<laughs> we did the state dance competition when I was in high school. This is in Jacksonville. It, yeah. Okay. Well, no, we drove like to somewhere else in Florida. Oh, okay, and then okay. it, it was next to the state fair. Okay. So at the state fair, we all got goldfish. All of them died. Like all, right, pretty yeah. much all of them died before we got do. back. Right. Yeah. So like my fish and my best friend's fish made it back to Jacksonville. I like drove like when we drop when we got dropped off at the school i immediately drove across the street to kmart and got a tank for my fish like with a pump and everything yeah my friend let her fish live in a cool whip bowl for a week and it jumped out and died right. so then my fish it was the suicide. only fish yes <laughs> euthanized itself yeah. my fish was the only fish left and yeah i kept it like all the way through college like i buried it with my first boyfriend like we'd been dating for like He's four dead? years <laughs> i buried the fish and my boyfriend no he went with me to bury the fish because it was like oh. Oh, I was like, wait. That, that's... I was like, this is a bigger story than the this fish. This fish, <laughs> and I went Seems through like a lot. you're transferring a lot from the, onto the fish here. The, yeah. story. <laughs> the fish was responsible for it's all like the, of it. No. It's like, yeah. But like, he died so long. Like, it was like Your through first college, boyfriend? through like half no, of a the, relationship. The yeah. And then oh like, this God, fish that's... died. Well, apparently though, with the fish like that, if they don't just die right away, they live forever. It was a good uh, fish. I guess I just am totally unaware of the natural lifespan of fish. I didn't... Well, <laughs> it happens because... For Jay Morris, if you're listening, give me a call because I don't know where the hell you are. But his aunt Shirley had all these fish. We had them in a pond out in the yard. Yeah, now, the ones that survived started to get so damn big right. that they had to put them in a tank oh, outside. Yeah. Oh, that's always crazy when you see those, uh, like the goldfish that get loose in like the Mississippi River and they get to be like massive. massive. Yeah, like hello, I have no natural predators. <laughs> <laughs> no one will eat me because I am a genetic freak. And my disgusting. my like, uncle <laughs> had Steiner. a bass. <laughs> That he I'm caught. a goldfish. <laughs> the largest thing in the world. My my growth can only be confined by my surroundings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like other fish. I'm not normal. <laughs> but my dad raises fish. Like that's that's, oh, yeah, his, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He works. He works. Like he's had tanks. My my <laughs> the, the larger. Oh part my of, goodness. Yeah. I've never seen these before. We'll put this up on our Twitter. We're at the Goods Pod. There are pictures of people uh, who go noodling for catfish and come and up get with a big gold. Goldfish instead, with like, because you know, they will do that. They'll like massive goldfish. There's a catfish now. Oh it's my too goodness! Yellow. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty common and it's, thing. It's so pretty. Well, it's pretty, but it's <laughs> also this is why you don't flush your goldfish down the toilet. You yeah. make sure they're dead and then you bury them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> if they're still alive, they'll get into the to the water system oh. and then they'll get out into the. And you'll uh, have giant goldfish shed. out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my buddy Chandler up there in uh, University of North Alabama is actually studying uh, invasive like fish, and a lot of them come from people flushing their fish down, <laughs> really? down, the, down the toilet. To yeah. ask him why we have caiman in Florida now. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, it's some cocaine dealer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Was like, I got a freaking Cayman. Like, got a, I got a great deal on a Cayman. Like, why are there Caymans in Florida? The 80s, that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you spent 5000 bucks on an alligator? I got my Cayman for three. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a just thing. Just a sweaty man in a, a gold chain. Yeah, they, it's just they wanted an alligator or a crocodile. Well, I mean, it's like, yeah, a low, like a low rent Tony Montana wannabe. Right, who was like, I got a Cayman. <laughs> exactly. He was like, I heard Panthers were harder to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> and he just got a came. Well, if you can't afford the full size alligator, you can get the smaller <laughs> model. Right. Right. They're cuter. Got, like they have bigger, or prettier eyes. I got this toucan, you know, at the <laughs> flea market, man. Oh <laughs> He's going to make me some cereal, man. <laughs> but no, but you go to Flo no pet oh stores in Florida. Gosh, pet stores in Florida. <laughs> Like pet stores in Florida are f weird. They're not like <laughs> pet stores anywhere else in the country. Well, apparently they have a lot of caimans. No, because you can go to a pet store. There's a place called Incredible Pets in Melbourne, Florida. And they, like, you could go there and get, like, the are days of good, what you get at a pet store is like, you know, uh, hamsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> tropical fish, puppy, kitten, maybe parakeets Birds. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's like sugar gliders yeah. and shit. Yeah, they got things like, they got stuff. It's like, this is a marmot. You want a marmot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like a pet store. And they're I was about to say, and that's still brick and mortar. You get the real stuff from the flea market. Yeah. Where they like it's pack like, up and leave at the end yeah, of the day. It's okay. like, hey, hey, man, I got a box full of poisonous frogs. Exactly. Yeah, no, and the good stuff's still in the van. Yeah, they have like, <laughs> yeah, it, this is like. I got a fucking puma in the van. <laughs> this is like, st like straight up like crap people get poaching or something like that where it's yeah. like 
yeah, he won't buy an ocelot here. They, they had like an ocelot there. And it's like, <laughs> that can't be legal. Yeah, <laughs> it absolutely isn't. Yeah, but sir, do you have an ocelot there permit? There was a guy at a flea market that had a wolf dog bigger than this table. Wow. Like, oh, hell yeah. yeah and I mean, was just my... like, oh, you can pet her. She likes girls. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my gosh. Well, we, we had a, we had a, a half pet wolf. And ride it into battle. Yeah, yeah. she was massive. She yeah. like dug a giant hole for herself because I guess it was like hot, it but was it was hot. like, yeah. A vi- like you know how you be like oh yeah it's part wolf and you're like eh, if you- there's no way that was a regular dog like right. it was yeah, a course. wolf yeah. <laughs> yeah I had a half our, our our family dog was a half wolf half lab uh, black lab yeah that thing was and it was half wolf and the thing was massive it my was friend like, had one named the- Ramses yeah yeah <laughs> and it was yeah. black yeah yeah and it had Look the upon my words had the Brutus had the tuxedo there, yeah. and his neck was like. <laughs> This bigger, <laughs> freaking huge. That dog one time was like, you know how like you'll pet a dog and it stands on your foot. Yeah, like it just stands there and gets like petted. I was petting him and then my friend threw something and so he pushed off to run on my foot. Ah. I thought he slashed through my sneaker. Oh, it hurts geez. so bad. Yeah, wow. But Florida just, pets, like, two hundred are... pounds of dog pushing <laughs> off. Yeah, I mean that's Florida like pets are incredible. You might yeah, say. no, I mean it's like a sign of <laughs> conspicuous conception where it's just like yeah, incredibly <laughs> legal. <laughs> Where it's just like, yeah, it, it's almost like a, um, um, you know, an East a, a Central Asian despot or something like that. Where it's I just like, this is my menagerie. It, it makes yeah. you not afraid of stuff. Like when I was like, I remember when I was little one time, my friend was crying all day because his iguana bit his aunt's ear and they made him get rid of it. Oh, like he had an iguana so or the big. Iguana? He had a giant iguana. <laughs> What did he? And he was so sad. His mom was making him get rid of his iguana because they. I'm almost scared to ask. Where did they? What did they do with the iguana? (laughs) Who knows? Yeah, they put (laughs) it. They just released it in the Everglades. Did y'all see this iguana in person? I've never seen it. Because did it stink? That's what I want to know. Iguanas never smell good. Because sometimes reptiles, Reptiles they really stink. It depends, though. Snakes stink! But they don't always stink. Snakes don't always stink. Because we used to have Critter Connection used to come to my school every year. Oh, yeah, Which is Maynard Cox uh, has been bitten by like five rattlesnakes. He's missing part of most of his oh, fingers nice. and he goes to schools all around florida like well, teaching you about we got we got teaching you not to get bit by how to snakes? not get bit by them like or I held, how to write with your left hand i held the he- <laughs> both i'm left-handed and i held the head of an anaconda when i was like in third grade yeah my, we had and they bring fin- like chinchillas and stuff but they show wow. you yeah. like this is an exotic animal this is how it bathes but people try to buy these and not take care of them properly because they think they're cute they kind of are teaching you when you're little not to buy something just because it's cute or whatever <laughs> right it's right yeah it's That's, but the freaking thing is, maynard yeah, he's yeah. the man it's ir- yeah people would be irris- the, the whole thing is like i've shaken like- that man's palm so many times <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. he's, he's passed away now. Oh, yeah. too bad. R.I.P. Died he in 2011. A, he was a very nice man. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you ever replace the the goldfish? No, no. I never got What was the goldfish's name? Haas Fiver. Haas like, Fiver? Because my, whenever there were almost no fish left, mine was the biggest one and my best friend's was the smallest one. So they were Haas and Lil Dink. Like okay. when we were driving back and they were still both alive, and then we got fifth place in that dance competition. I was super pissed about it, so that was his last name. Was oh, Fiverr. okay. I have so many questions about this. What was the dance competition? What did you dance to? Oh, oh, I don't remember what dance. I danced like my whole. It was, was just it like, like a, cheer dance that oh, you do okay. in high school, where it's like, yay, palms. It wasn't like a group. Was it solo dancing? Oh just, no, no, no. It was group. like a team. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the we did. A, I did a jazz and solo. You guys to all got in the heart. <laughs> <laughs> we all got like we we're just because that was like what else is there to do in like wherever we are next to this convention center yeah and it was like oh cool stay fair so we just like oh, ate okay. deep fried oreos and got fish yeah. and then drove back to jacksonville nice it's just yeah. like yeah there just... was also like a murder mystery with one of the fish where like one of the girls woke like we were all sharing a bunch of rooms and one of the girls like they gave them to you in those little like makeshift ones yeah and a girl woke up and the whole top of her little plastic tank was food and the fish had suffocated like someone had had, like overfed her fish in the middle of the night and no one ever admitted it so one could have been mr rogers one of the wow. fish was murdered you're listening to season three of cereal <laughs> <laughs>
Gonna find out who killed these fish. And one of those girls are never gonna talk. Wow, that's <laughs> insane. What somebody was just like, fuck you, bitch. And that's what I was thinking, because it was like, what? I would fuck your fish. <laughs> yeah, no. Hey, there was some deep seated stuff that I remember that's like amazing. it wasn't my room and being like, wow, somebody really went after Death someone. Death by like, Tetramix. Went yeah. by someone's after someone's heart on that one. <laughs> by the way, when you mentioned the uh the goldfish uh committing suicide by jumping out of the, the cool whip container, <laughs> it did just remind me when we were in fifth grade, uh my fifth grade uh teacher, science teacher was like it was a Friday. She was like, okay, so I've got this big top where and on Monday we're going to dissect a slug. Everybody gets to dissect a slug and we're going to learn about invertebrates. And I fucking wasn't looking forward to that at all because it sounded gross. And, uh, sh- but she had this giant Tupperware container that was full of slugs and she just like puts it down and she's like, all right, so have a good weekend. We'll see you Friday. So we come in first thing Monday morning and every, all, 30 slugs had escaped yes o- over the weekend <laughs> had escaped out of the tupperware container gone down the side down the table onto the floor under the door and then had spread out into the hallway and had gone you know about i'd say 50 feet down the hall in both directions and there was just a disgusting trail of Tra- slime <laughs> going all the way <laughs> there was about, just everywhere. There was about twenty little slime trails going oh every gosh. direction, and they all, you know, dried up and died. But, Aww. but you know, they made a good run. That is so. And, Aww, and we never had to dissect okay. slugs. Uh, <laughs> that was gross. That was really gross. <laughs> My ecology teacher had a Mark bearded Summer. lizard named Samantha. <laughs> Uh-huh. And people would like volunteer to take her home and stuff, but she was mean. Yeah. Like I like she was never cool. How with me. did it smell? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> that was another reptile that did not stink. How do they do that? Because the one that doesn't stink. Change the freaking bedding, people. Yeah, yeah just change out the bark. Or the yeah, clean it, clean terrarium. out the terrarium because yeah. a lot of times, yeah, a lot of times people would just be like yeah, I got this ball python, and they would like and it's, put it. It's pooping. Yeah, yeah and they would just All put the it red. in like a fifty-gallon fish tank, and they think it's massive, and they're just like, "Yeah, I'll take it out sometimes." You know, when we're watching football, or you oh know, my goodness, I, I have a date over, and I'll show her, show her my snake. So <laughs> are you, are you, you're talking about a snake now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Night. What's the weirdest pet you had? I never had odd pets. Okay. Well, I will say this though, from experience. I mean, I don't know if lizards are great pets, but uh, turtles are more responsive than you'd think. I like turtles. Yeah. I had hermit crabs, but my friend had turtles. How long did a hermit feed crab live? Uh, they did not live that long. But oh. I was so young, like maybe a year, like maybe from when I was like six or seven. But I cried so hard when they died. Their names were Hermit and Kermit. <laughs> um, I love them very much. Aww. One of them changed. One of them grew enough to change into like another shell. Oh, we, uh, my friend. Scar- I was always trying to catch it and never caught it. My friend Scarlett got uh, a one that, uh, and of course her name was Shelly, and <laughs> Shelly got from one one shell to the next shell. Uh huh. And the the big shell that she got, she had, uh, she got it from a souvenir city down in Gulf Shores, and they had painted uh, the character Susie from Rugrats on the shell. Nice. <laughs> and it got into her Susie shell, and then hit the fucking road. It escaped. We never found Shelly. <laughs> what? It got out. That's so funny because you're supposed to let them out like for an hour to a half hour every week to let them like stretch their legs. Yeah, Scarlett was doing all the right stuff and then Susie or, or Shelly. They're faster than you think. Shelly made a fucking break for it. We never found Shelly. Because I took mine out once when I was way young. I like took them out and then I was like went to the bathroom real quick. I came back. Only one of them was there and I was like, oh great. We've had found its way. I think it went up over the couch and then dropped down because it was like stuck in between the sofa and the wall, <laughs> like crabbing. Yeah, oh, then, no. but not on the ground, so it must have gone over the top. And I was just like, "How the heck?" It's <laughs> gone for like two minutes. But yeah, they're fast, man. Katrina, uh, tell us uh, uh, your uh, all of your social media stuff. I'm Katrina Savad everywhere. S I V A D. It's just Davis backwards because yeah, there's yeah. a billion Davises. Right. right. And um, 
Yeah, I'm roast battling not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday. Oh, cool. Who are you roast battling? Uh, Isaac Hirsch. Okay. All lovely, right. lovely young man. Okay. I'm so excited. That'll be fun. Um, and then you're gonna I'm crush doing, him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. And then I'm doing sets tape at Karma Lounge this Tuesday. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah. if you're in LA, come to Karma Lounge tonight and see uh see bum, Katrina bum, sets bum, tape. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, that's awesome. Well, uh, yeah, you can find us on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash the goods pod. We're on Twitter at the goods pod, youtube.com slash the goods pod. Find all of our bumper music at Spotify, the goods pod. Big shout out to our friend Richard Eden up there in the North Pole doing the hard work at the goods pod.com. Pat, what should the folks do when they get to iTunes? Uh, they should rate, review, and subscribe. And by the way, we have a lot of Alabama listeners. Get your fannies over to the voting booth. If you're registered to vote, go vote for Doug Jones. I'm yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I believe two, if, if this comes out on Tuesday, I think Tuesday coming up is the last day in which you can register to vote for this election. Yeah, that's right. In Alabama. So do that. Vote for Doug Jones. But if you're not in Alabama, you can rate, review, and subscribe and tell a friend. Uh, it shows the attitude of gratitude. And if you don't have the attitude of gratitude, fuck you. <laughs> and uh, song of the week this week, I was actually uh, got to hang out with past guest of the show, uh, the liberal redneck himself, Trey Crowder. And uh, he uh, recommended this guy, uh, Tyler Childers. And I've been listening to this record purgatory all weekend. Uh, this song is called White House Road. And we'll see you next week. Early in the morning when the sun does rise. Laying in the bed with bloodshot eyes. When the sun sinks low That's about the time my rooster crows I got women up and down this creek And keep me going and my engine clean Love me ragged but I don't fret Cause there ain't been one slow me down none yet That moonshine get me higher than the grocery bill. Take my trouble to the high wall, throw them in the river and get your bill. We've been sniffing that cocaine, ain't nothing better when the wind cuts cold. Lord, it's a mighty hard living, but a damn good feeling to run these roads. Try to tell me red Keep this living and you wind up dead Cast your troubles on the Lord of Lords Wind up laying on a cooling board But I got buddies up White House Road And keep me strutting when my feet hang low Get me higher than the grocery bill Take my troubles to the high wall Throw them in the river and get your fill We've been sniffing that cocaine Ain't nothing better when the wind cuts cold But it's a mighty hard living But a damn good feeling to run these roads It's a damn good feeling to run Sing them hymns while the banjo plays You can tell them ladies that they ought not frown Cause there ain't been nothing ever held me down
The Goods from the Woods was mixed, edited, and distributed by me, Rivers Langley. You can find the show on Twitter at The Goods Pod. Our theme song was composed by DJ Smiles. Check him out on Twitter at DJ Smiles. <laughs>